Okay, let's do 7.33. Um, the one part about this problem that's, that's a little bit confusing is in the back of the book, they give you the answer for the probabilities if the child is a boy, but in the actual problem, they just say, what is the probability of the child being born? And so we'll get, we'll get into that here in a second. But the, the most important thing to begin with is just to sort of set up the problem. So it's talking about this female here, this female 2-1, and it says she has a father that is colorblind, right? Gets together with a guy that is not colorblind or hemophilia, doesn't have hemophilia. And then they have a child that has hemophilia. And so we have to take all of this information and then kind of figure out what the genotype is of the female, 2-1 and 2-2, and then figure out the probability that if they have a second child, what is the probability that that child is going to have hemophilia, okay? So um, the, oh, the other bit of information they, they give you is that these two genes are located on the X chromosome and that they're 10 centimorgans apart. So looking at this female here, you know at each of those genes, since she's not hemophiliac and she's not colorblind, she has to have a wild type allele. You know that her father here has a colorblindness and is not and has wild type of hemophilia because it's X-linked, so it would show up, right? It shows he shows up as colorblind and he shows up as non-hemophiliac. So therefore, you know that um, this allele, you know the allele, or let me sorry, you know the chromosome that she inherited from um, her father. It was a colorblind mutant, right? And a wild type at the hemophilia. Now you also know that the child is normal, um, has, has sort of uh, normal uh, eyesight or whatever, um, is not colorblind, and is hemophiliac. So you know that that hemophilia allele has to come from her. It can't come from, from the male here because otherwise that male would have it. And so you can piece together this 2-1 uh, genotype of this female. So she's gonna have two chromosomes. On one chromosome, she's gonna have a colorblind allele and wild type of the other gene, and then wild type of the colorblind, and then the hemophilia allele here. And the male, since the male is not showing anything, you know the male is wild type and wild type at both of those genes. Okay, so here, once you have this part all set up, it's not, it's not too difficult. And so what is the probability that the child will, will have hemophilia, all right? And so in the back of the book, it talks about if, if the child's a boy, what's the probability? So it's a little bit different, right? But anyway, the, the, the crux of it is you have to figure out what kind of gametes this female is going to produce. And so here, um, let's, just, let's just write them down. These first two gametes are the gametes that she will produce if there's no crossing over event occurring between these two genes, right? These second two, if there was a crossing over event occurred here in between the genes, the wild type would come over here, the colorblindness would come over here. These are the two alleles that would result. And if the distance is 10 centimorgans between them, that means that if you had 100 gametes, right, five of them would have to be this gamete, five would be this gamete, you put five plus five over 10 over 100, and that's what would give you that 10 centimorgans, okay? So here now we know the percentages, because we were given that distance, we know the percentages of the production, you know, how many you expect of each of the gametes. And so once we have this, this is pretty easy. And basically this is, now we're saying in the back of the book, all it does is says, okay, if the, if the child is male, right, um, what's, the, what's the probability that the male is going to have hemophilia, right? Just hemophilia, right? 45%, colorblind and hemophilia, 5%, wild type, wild type, 5%, right? And because we get he, all of the males are getting this Y chromosome that doesn't contribute anything to the offspring, right? Or to that phenotype. And what is the probability that the offspring will be colorblind and wild type is 45%. What I've done here though, is I've sort of, I've answered what they actually ask you, right? And so 
what they ask you is what is the probability that the, that a child will have hemophilia and so the probability of that is that the child is a male and that the child carries a, an allele for hemophilia right it doesn't say just hemophilia, only hemophilia and so the probability that child's a male is one half right it's the y um, chromosome from the father and that in the probability that the child has hemophilia it can either it, it can the, the male can either have the wild type hemophilia or colorblind hemophilia and so you add those two together and that's 50 percent. so it's one half times one half equals one fourth the probability that the child is colorblind so one half the problem so the probability that it's male and that it's colorblind it can either get this gamete or this gamete and be colorblind right so one half times one half equals one fourth. If the problem was to say, what is the probability that the child is, is um, colorblind, but not hemophiliac, you would say, okay, probability that the child's a male times the probability that it's that, it, that the, the male has colorblindness, but no, not hemophilia would then be this 45%. And so you times those two together. So, so the problem isn't really clear. Well, it, it's clear what it's asking, but then the answer in the back of the book goes kind of a different way. Okay, so what's the probability that the child is both colorblind and, uh, he, and has hemophilia? So they have to be a male. So probability that it's a male, one half times the probability. And this one is specific, right? That it's colorblind and has hemophilia. So you just times that by the 0.05% and that's what you would get. Okay, and the probability that the child is neither. And so this one, um, you, it, all of the females will be wild type, wild type. And so you have add that. So it can either be female or it can be a male that is wild type, wild type. And so the probability that the um, child is a female is one half, right? Plus the probability that it's a male that's wild type, wild type right, is probability that it's a male, one half times getting the probability that it gets this particular gamete, which is uh, 5%, so that equals 0.025%, and so this is what the probability would be. Okay, so the, so the, so, you know, uh, the, the important part is, is you kind of understand the production of these gametes, and that's kind of what the answer in the back of the book uh, uh, kind of answered that did, if you if you read the, the part in the back of the book it states you know just sort of this stuff and that's great that's fine but uh the wording of the of the problem uh, will, was not, was not the best okay so don't worry about that but just you know um kind of understand these principles here all right so that's 7.33